Enjoy, James Francis.
Wow. I feel like I just got a sonic and visual glimpse of the future. This is James Francis. I'm Kiana Faircloth here Hello. with you, live from Yamaha Piano Salon for another amazing session. Wow. Yeah. What did we just hear, James? Um, what did we play? We played um, Reciprocal. That was from our first album. Then we played this new, tom new tune called Levitate. It's a uh, brand new song from earlier this year. And yeah, we just kind of like to go in between different songs and kind of blend stuff together. So I see you kind of have an affinity for all things flight, it seems, or, or taking off from this world. In a way, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just. Is that intentional? Well, I think it's just kind of part of who I am, but it's kind of intentional to try to make sure that it is as clear as possible when expressing it. So I think that part is intentional, but the, just the feeling of it, I think, is pretty organic, kind of where we come from. Especially Jeremy and I, we've been playing together since we were like 12, so oh, wow. we've always kind of had that forward momentum in our playing, I think the more we've just grown and worked on different concepts and ideas together, so. Now, Jeremy's on your debut album, Flight. Yeah, Jeremy's on everything, yeah. Jeremy. I didn't realize yeah. you guys grew up together. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. so you go all the way back to all your hometown back, of Houston. All the way back to uh, Mr. Wall's dentist office, <laughs> <laughs> some of jazz workshop, all of that stuff. So you started a jazz trio, by the way. How old were you when you started your first? Around 13, 12, but, you know, we were just playing, um, Whoever people wanted music and where locally and wherever they treated musicians poorly, that's where we got to play. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So you started out, you actually whoever started. Whoever's watching this, I'm sorry if you've ever called us back in Houston that was not directed towards you. <laughs> I don't want those text messages. Well, you know, I called you to play here and I gave you $50 for eight hours. And, uh, <laughs> Hopefully times are better. <laughs> no, you, you never know. They were, you know? Sometimes, you know. This is your... <laughs> But speaking of that, you know, gigging hasn't really been a thing lately, of course, you because know, of the pandemic. Right, you gotta figure out other stuff, you know, yeah. And you haven't, you told me you haven't played yourself in about two weeks. Well, yeah, that wasn't by choice. I actually injured my arm in um, working out and um, I've been having to take a couple weeks off. And your dexterity, is that on point still after not playing for a full 14 days? That's crazy. Um, I, thank you for the compliment, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I know how to work with what I have. <laughs> so, you know, just trying to, you know, but that's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit because you've got quite a setup here. You've got an upright and a grand. What's happening here with the upright? Because I'm hearing some electronic sounds coming from this. I've never, I've never seen this. Yeah, this is actually just a regular piano. There's actually no sound. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about touch. No. Um, yeah, so this is a transacoustic piano because we're here in the Yamaha Artist Space, and I'm a proud um, endorser of Yamaha pianos. They're incredible. And uh, yeah, this is this new technology where I can basically use the piano however I want. I can manipulate it and turn it into a keyboard, or I can use it as a regular piano, or I can kind of just do whatever I want to it, so that's kind of what I'm doing. And how are you controlling that with your, I see you have your laptop here. Yeah, so I'm running it through a program and have uh, these different sounds that I've kind of tweaked from different um, programs and virtual synthesizers and kind of just make it my own thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And I see you have Ben Heim over here doing a oh visual component. Tell ben us Heim about is that. a genius in his own right. He's um, He's like an astrophysicist. <laughs> He's just incredible. He's an artist in his own right, musician, but then also knows everything there is to know about sound and just music and visuals. And he's in the future. And I'm just happy that he has agreed to try some stuff out. So excited Absolutely. that he's here. What are we going to hear next? Um, what are we going to play next? Um, so we played two ballads first, so we got the ballads. No, uh, we're gonna play the tune called Open Water. I wrote it a few years ago, and um, yeah, we're just gonna see what happens. All right, take it away. Cool. Thank you. 
So open water. Open water. Is that new? That's old, actually. That's um, about five or six years old. Tell yeah. me about what we can expect to hear, because flight really was a great introduction to who James Francis is. Thank you. Sonically. And so I'm sure since then you've grown. It's been two years yeah. since the release of your debut on Blue Note. What is it that we can expect to hear? How have you matured musically since your debut? Um, I guess playing more, just being in different scenarios with other musicians and just experiencing life. That's kind of the best way to do it. You know? But I think organically it's just been a natural progress almost as anyone that gets older that's playing or working on anything that's artistic, I think. So you've had a very unique opportunity as an artist to play across genres, you might as well say, from, I mean, everybody. I listed them in your intro, Matt, Pat Metheny to Chris Potter. You started out with Jeff Tane Watts when you were at yeah, the new school. That's right, yeah. Wow. So how is it that you're finding yourself in so many different arenas? I mean, for me, I had never been such a purist to saying, oh, I'm only going to do this, oh, I'm only going to do this, or I've never thought about how other people were going to perceive me if I only did this for a second or you know, worked over here. I just try to play in different scenarios that, I, that interest me and I feel that have something to offer me musically. Mm. So I don't know, I never have really thought about the genre, but you know, people feel safe when there's names right. for stuff, <laughs> you, know, so. you know, I guess boxes. Y you you know, people love <laughs> symmetry <laughs> and just saying like, oh, this is that, yeah. so let's put that there, you know. But I don't know, I just still just try to exist and do things that interest me. Let's go back a little bit. Sure. You grew up, of course, in Houston. Yep. And you went to the same high school as Jason Moran? Jason Moran, like a bunch of people. Jeremy went there, uh, Eric Harlan, Beyonce, uh, Chris Dave, uh, Mike Moreno, Walter Smith. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people. Robert Glasper, yeah. Wow. And so yeah. when Jason Moran first heard you, he said you seemed like you were years beyond where you should have been at the time when you were actually in high school mm -hmm. playing. That was a very generous comment. <laughs> you know, it was very uh, encouraging and <laughs> supportive. You're very humble. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people that will humble you. <laughs> so. Tell me about, okay, so growing up, you actually have a connection with Joe Sample? Yeah, he's, um, he was one somebody who I was super close with from like a very young age. Um, he was like a family friend, so I grew up seeing him all the time. What did you, what would you say is the most important thing that you gleaned from Joe? I mean, a lot of times we didn't even talk music. He was just always just, <laughs> he was really funny. Um, just his personality, you just learned so much and just watching him conduct bands and how he interacted with younger musicians and I don't know, he just knew exactly what he wanted at all times. So for me, I was like, oh wow, this somebody who knows how to lead and knew how to say things appropriately. Hmm. It was also, was hilarious too. Yeah, <laughs> with a little tinge of humor there. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to make sure I don't offend anybody because he's such a legend, but he's, um, he was great, you know. Do you have a particular, a more particular, particularly hilarious memory, I guess I should say, with Joe? Well, you know, it involves some curse words, so I think <laughs> I would just leave it out, you know, because, you know, there might be some kids turn, tuning in, and they're like, Mommy, what does that word mean? You know, and <laughs> like, actually, that means this. So. I think we got the point. Yeah, yeah, but he was, he was great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if you're just tuning in, James Francis is here with his trio. I don't know where the cameras are. Which it's one? right here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, I was looking way in the back. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Dutton on the drums. Ace Town. And on the bass. Matt Brewer, Arizona, and right? New Mexico. Oh. New Mexico. Wow. You know, Oklahoma first. OKC, you know. And on the audiovisual technical component? Ben Hine. From Australia. Down under. Down under. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to hear next? Um. Let's just go something, with it. Something coherent, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> we'll just go with the flow. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> yes, do that. James Francis.
wow. That's all I got. It's wow. I feel like I really literally feel like I'm getting a glimpse of the future listening to you. Thank you. <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about your songwriting because when you're not making music and writing music for yourself, James, you're writing for other people. Yeah, um, within the last couple of years, um, I've been fortunate enough to work with people, you know, like The Roots, like I've done stuff with Questlove, we've done stuff for movies and everything. Then also with uh, Childish Gambino this past year, I um, produced and uh, co-wrote some songs for his last album and um, also collaborate a lot with the singer Yeba, an amazing singer as well as uh, Mark Ronson. And Yeba's on your debut. She is, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. And I can't get over what we're seeing here. I hope that it's translating for the folks. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I wish this was like the whole floor and the whole ceiling. I wish. But um, yeah, Ben's incredible. And uh, we recently started kind of working on some sonic visual things that we're just kind of chipping away at. But he's yeah. been doing it for a while. So I saw his work. and I was like, hey, you know, I'd love to collaborate and work on something. Now, so. is that birthed out of your, you have a unique gift. It's called Synesthesia? Synesthesia, yeah. Tell us about that because I'm sure many folks aren't really familiar with what that is. Sure, I mean, it's basically um, this thing where you have a color to sound, sometimes visual, sometimes it's um, mentally, but it's like, it's like almost a trigger whenever you hear something, your brain perceives it as music or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's colors associated with it, so. Oh, so how does that work? So whenever you hear a particular note you automatically see a color associated with that note or how yeah, yeah exactly exactly yeah wow that sounds like it could get it could get distracting does it i mean it's kind of been a thing for ever since i can kind of remember since i was like a little kid so just you know it's just a, a thing that happens an event that takes place but it's it's not as crazy as people think it is it's for, for me at least i mean there's different people who have it and experience it different ways but for me, it's just a, a, a thing, <laughs> you know. So, so Ben and I have been um, trying to chip away at whatever that is and trying to bring that to life as best as we can. Wow. Yeah. I can imagine if I were a child and I were seeing colors as I'm playing, I might not know exactly what that is. So how did you articulate what was happening in your head as you were playing as a child? Well, I just remember certain songs that I would learn as a kid and everything. I would just it's like, oh yeah, this this passage is this color, this is this color, and I would be like, wait a minute, not everybody perceives music that way, yeah, you know? Like you a, don't hear like, oh, that yeah. color. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, this has like green and yellow in this part, or you know, this song is like, oh yeah, this Michael Jackson record is like reddish brownish, you know, or like this song is this color, this part of human nature is orange, you know. So how did you learn that that was actually a thing then? Um, a friend of mine actually um, kind of hit me to it. He was like, yeah, um, I think you might want to check this out. It just sounds like, you know, what this might be. You know, coming from Houston, not many people are like that aware of what's going on. So I was like, oh, m yeah, I guess this does fit the criteria or whatever. Yeah. So tell us, what's next? You just recorded a new album. Just recorded a new album. Um, yeah, we're still kind of working on that. Then um, you're still doing some songwriting, producing and everything, and just trying to keep a mask on my face, you know. <laughs> not Aren't let people all? cough in my <laughs> mouth, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> Aren't we all? Stay safe. Wear your right, mask. Right, you know, wear your mask and wash your hands. Wash your hands. Right. <laughs> Go vote. All well, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at the Yamaha thank Piano you. Salon. What are you going to close this out with? Um, this is a new piece called, um, I don't even have a title yet, but um, it's on the next album. Um, yeah. So we're hearing it here first? Um, say yes, say yes. Jeremy, is this the <laughs> first time? Well, I don't even know. I don't remember. I don't like jinx and stuff. I don't, I don't. We'll say you're hearing it here first. Well, it's new to the people who are on the live stream right now, right? Exactly. So it's, <laughs> it's a new version of today. Right? Awesome. No one's heard it today, so. The James Francis Trio, with Jeremy Dutton on the drums, Matt Brewer on the bass, and Ben Heim on the audio-visual component on Kiana Fairclough. Special thanks 
to Bonnie and Aaron and all the folks here at Yamaha and also John, Corey, and Chris at WBGO. And thank you all so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can click on that Donate Now tab at the top of your screen and donate to WBGO to make sure that this kind of content can continue. And we'll meet you back here next week. Thank you, James. Thank you.